What's cracking this morning, 6 and 12? This is your girl, Marky Lemons Rao. Today, I have the honor of interviewing Javon Stewart. I actually have on her T-shirt, No Excuses Today. And the reason for bringing Javon on, well, one, she reached out to me uh, via Instagram. So this is this is just how social media and technology works. She's also from Chicago and a good friend of a good friend who I respect and admire for what she's doing within the beauty industry. But I know that we don't have enough training on mindset. And mindset to me is everything. If you can change your mind, you can change anything. And it's the hardest thing to change. So I want Javon Stewart to tell us her story, how to implement some wonderful strategies as we record this Monday morning. It's marvelous Monday. I put on her yellow mustard T-shirt. We bringing in the sun this week. We got things to do, baby. We got things to do. So, Javon, tell us your story. Hey, everybody. Uh, As Marky said, I am Javon Stewart. And first, let me say thank y'all so much for having me. I'm super duper excited on this Monday morning. Um, Today is my son's 16th birthday. So I'm super excited. I'm my mom now for 16 years. And um, that's always exciting. So how did I come to No Excuse Today? Well, there is a backstory. No Excuse Today was actually birthed in the middle of the pandemic last year. Um, Flipping amazing. So so I'm a part of this group called The Morning Meetup, hosted by David Shands. Um, It's a group of 400 plus entrepreneurs that gather um, on a Zoom call every morning, Monday through Friday, and we talk about entrepreneurial things. Well, when I'm sitting here in this group, I'm just hearing people make excuses, excuses, excuses. So during that time, I decided to join up for Speakers Academy, Jeremy Anderson's uh, Next Level Speakers Academy. And one of his interview questions to me was, hey, Javon, what do you want to be known for? And I sat And I thought about it because we were rebranding me as a speaker. And he said, what do you want to be known for? And I thought about it. And I was like, you know what? I want to be known for making no excuses. No excuse today. It came to me just like that. Um, Just so you know why I have this mindset. I grew up in the city of Chicago. I was a foster kid for 11 years of my life before being adopted at the age of 16. Now, that's very, very rare in the city of Chicago. So in my whole life, I had about seven mothers, um, two fathers. And um, so I make no excuses as to why I can't accomplish goals and, and dreams and visions. Anything that I set out to do, I make no excuse about. It. And so I decided, um, well, this will be a great message to carry on um, when I go to speak to kids in schools. And um, so I just decided, look, let me put this on a T-shirt and this is going to be a segue into the schools at some point so I could share my story of um, of hope and inspiration that people don't like you don't have to what what people say you can or cannot do. Don't make excuses about why you can't get ahead in life. And so that's everything that I do is pretty much generated with the whole family in mind because I'm very passionate about that because I had a lack of of a family when I was a kid. And so when you see me talking about uh, no excuse today, I'm I'm pulling from my childhood. I'm pulling from everything that um, got in my way. And I'm like busting it in the head. No excuse today. (laughs) (laughs) that's it gonna bust them in the head Uh but right Uh, so this is uh one i knew you had a story and this is why when they talk about your uh network being your net worth so you're friends with my girl la uh i have seen la evolve as an entrepreneur i'm a fifth generation entrepreneur and there is a entrepreneur mindset. I want everybody to know it is definitely a mindset. For me, it came easy because I've always paid attention and I understood the sacrifices that my great grandparents, my grandparents and my parents were making as entrepreneurs. My mother quit her job as a dietitian to go sell hot dogs in the park. And people would tease me because my mama sold hot dogs in the park. But I realized my mother was making she was actually netting more income working less than any other parents who had good jobs. And I went to a private school and there was a private school mindset. Right. Um, So my mother 
as a teen parent, showed me what it looked like to quit your freaking job and go do what you're passionate about. Now, I knew that you had a story because I told you to reach out to me and Lai knows how I am. Um, And with that being said, to to one, be in a system for 11 years and then to emerge. Right. Um, Speaks volumes to itself, especially here in the city of Chicago, where yeah. at that point, it's very unlikely to be adopted, right? Um, and so you had to overcome obstacles at a very early age and, and, and really learn how to manifest, to, to maneuver a system and to speak up for yourself at a very early age says a lot about what was instilled in you and now what you're instilling in others. So I did not know. The, the entire backstory. So to see you in this entrepreneur group and you talked about the fact that people are in this entrepreneur group and they're coming up with excuses every single day. How yeah. does one start to change their mind? Um, wow, this is um, that's a very interesting question. I think one of the one of the things we must do as adults is first start with accepting responsibility accepting that where you are in life is because you put yourself there as an adult. I'm not talking about what happened to you in childhood. What happened to me in childhood? Crack took over my family life, right? Foster home to foster home to foster home, emotional abuse, all that. That was in childhood. Once I became an adult and started sitting in the driver's seat and controlling my own life, now it's me accepting responsibility for where I am or where I'm not. So that's one of the first things that a person must do is accept that responsibility. Like, yo, I'm not where I'm supposed to be is because I contributed to this, nobody else. And when you can acknowledge that part, the rest is easy. The rest is easy. You know what? I'm thinking about finances. I'm thinking so many things, but let me go back. So I knew that in 2012, my life did not look the way that I wanted it to look. My money was funny. My energy was zapped and I did not have enough time to date my husband. And so I gave myself an ultimatum. I had a a, a true coming to Jesus discussion with myself. Right. Jesus was a part of the discussion. And I read the book, The One Thing. And when I read the book, The One Thing, there's one quote that I use all the time. Be like a postage stamp. Stick to one thing until you get there. Right. And then still, I saw some improvements once I implemented those strategies. So we got to implement. Then I read the book, The Miracle Morning, and I implemented some of those strategies. Well, what has happened recently in the past mm, 90 days, I was diagnosed with lipedema. Lipedema is a fat disorder. And I have to laugh at myself because I can't even be regular old fat. I had to have a special type of fat, right? I can't just be regular fat. And where did the mindset come? It came again from my mother. My mother told me at a very early age, I was every bit of 10 years old. She says, yeah, I think you're going to be overweight, you know, because I was I was a big girl and I, I became big in the course of a year. And now I understand why, because it was hormonal, right? Yeah. Um, And she says, but if you're going to be overweight because you don't lose no weight, then being overweight cannot be your excuse. Mm, You you still need to get up and look good. You still need to be active. You still need to participate. Being fat can't be your excuse, Marky. And in everything that I've done in life, it was to show up and show out to represent overweight women especially when I'm coming in there, I'm killing the skinny girls, right? Like, I just like, it. like, who, who, girl, you ain't got none of this people, right? Um, but it can be exhausted, right? Yeah. And, and now that I understand that even in the midst of having a disease that I didn't know about until I was 50, it was what my, my mother said to me. So as a kid growing up, who was that one person that you can go back and you know that, they put something in you that allowed you to shift or change in your life. Uh, it's that one person, the one person that actually stands out is my deceased aunt. God rest her soul. She was one of the people when we went into the foster care system, she was one of the, she was the second person to 
to retrieve us. So I consider her as one of the mother figures. When I was around 11, maybe 10 or 11, we used to, I grew up in a project uh, in the Ickies that is now torn down, yeah. but that's where I grew up at. And one, one day I was running from a fight. OK, if you live in a dog eat dog environment, you, it's always going to be, you know, some some chaos some turmoil, some dysfunction. And so I'm running from a fight. And this is this is our lives as kids, you know, fighting, getting into trouble. And she saw me running from a fight and um, she had some choice words for me in, in, a, in front of a large crowd. And from a, that day forward, like I. I had to turn around and face my fears and confront them and assert myself in front of a crowd of people because she said, if you didn't turn around and fight, then she was going to X, Y, Z. And I had a split decision to make. Do I, do I stand here and do I take a butt whipping from her or do I turn around and face my fears and, 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 um, you know, overcome this challenge it was a challenge for me because I'm all I'm five foot two right I've always been tiny and you know people will always try to play me like I'm a cheeseburger because I'm so tiny but then they didn't realize like oh she's not a cheeseburger she's really a big neck but so, so I turned around and I confronted my I confronted my fears I confronted this 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 is the day I truly believe that I became assertive and that I um I asserted myself and I and I didn't back down and I developed this confidence about myself. And I have that, um, I contribute that to my auntie for her being as harsh and direct to me um, actually shaped me who I am today. And so wow. that's right, yeah. Now, I don't know, uh, and I like to decipher this because I definitely understand coming from the South side of Chicago I is different than coming from anywhere else in the world, right? Yes. Um, so for those who do not know, if you are a black child on the south side of Chicago and I even start telling the city, because, see, I used to believe that on Friday nights, everybody ate fried catfish spaghetti and coleslaw. And then I realized that's really only a Chicago south side black yeah. thing that people down south. They like fried cat. Who eat that? <laughs> but it wasn't until my white friends was like, girl, we don't eat no fried catfish on Friday night. I'm like, good look. It's a staple. We were at Docks and J&J Fish every Friday night. Anyway, I digress. But I want to point this out. What Javon is talking about is you had to go and fight. So yeah. if you did not stand up for yourself and you was running from a fight, you had to go out and fight. Or yeah. your mama, your auntie, your granddaddy, your daddy, your mama, they was going to commence to whooping on that ass once you got up <laughs> yeah. in the house, right? And yeah. I wasn't... I wasn't a fighter either. Right. I could talk a lot. of Look, my mouth talking nonsense was like this. And I'm going to tell you what's kind of funny. I was fearful of fighting when I was young. Mm -hmm. And once the mindset like I don't care popped in. Yeah. It, it, it changes everything. So yeah. and as I tell people, I'm not a fighter, but I don't mind fighting and I'm not going to let you punk me. And it's the mindset yeah. around the fight that really matters right yeah um because a lot of people talk a lot of stuff and i realize mm -hmm. it's a performance right <laughs> and the person <laughs> who can sell the wolf cookies the toughest right <laughs> yeah. tends to be viewed as being the toughest whether they've ever had a fight or not yeah it's the perception of their ability to be able to whoop on you <laughs> that makes them look like they can fight because i haven't seen a whole bunch of people i'm like yeah. come think about it. i ain't never seen her fight <laughs> she talked the baddest nonsense out here in the streets as a parent what was the one thing it was very important for you because you had the mentality before the t-shirt line into your 16 year old well you said what was the mentality what, what was important for you to instill? What was that one thing? Like, yeah. like, I'll give you my example. I never wanted to raise something that I would not want myself. So yeah. I see women raise male children, even though men need men. Uh, I've seen women raise men children and they wouldn't want their son themselves. Why yeah. would you want to give that to another woman? Yeah, that's, you know, I, I have two children, my 16 year old son and a soon to be 12 year old daughter. And one of the things that I am adamant about is making sure that I was present in their lives. Because what I what I 
what I observed over the years, me growing up in the projects, me looking at how some of the young men in Chicago go astray. Um, and I took note of that, all of that as a kid. Um, and I took note of all the positive things that the foster parents that I that I was, you know, under their care, I looked at the positive things that they did. And that actually helped me with my parenting skills. So say, for instance, um, I had one uh, foster parent, she was into real estate. And this was uh, being with her family was the first time I ever saw entrepreneurship. This is seventh to eighth grade. And so I saw something outside of the projects. But what she did was she instilled, um, she did mantras with us. And as a kid, I hated that. She worked for, I think, NBC or ABC, what, whatever news station is downtown Chicago. And we used to go to the studio with her. So I was like seeing a whole different side of things. But she used to make us do positive affirmations. And she had us listening to like Les Brown. And I'm like, ah, oh, why do I, you know? But here's the funny thing. Fast forward years later, this, these are the same things that I started doing with my children. I would just turn Les Brown on and they didn't they weren't required to sit and watch. But I knew that they were listening. And so it was just a, a conscious decision that I made to do things differently. I wanted to be present in my children's lives. Um, I couldn't use the excuse that I didn't have my mother, that I didn't have my daddy, that I didn't have family members to, you know, come rush into our aid when we needed them the most. I couldn't use that as an excuse as to why I couldn't be present in my children's lives. And so what I did was very intentional. I make sure I expose my kids to a lot of different things because that's what changed it for me. So early on, my kids my kids were learning Mandarin Chinese, like learning different languages. I, uh, Decatur Classical School in Chicago, I used to drive all the way from the South Side all the way to the North Side to take my son to school every single day. When the car broke down, I got on a bus. It was an eight hour a day, two hours there, two hours back, two hours there, two hours back. So I just made sure that I exposed them to different things because I didn't want them to, I didn't want them to grow up like me at all. And, and to this day, I still do that. What I love is the, the mantras, right? So yes. a couple of things. Um, my, my oldest son is 25 and my youngest one is 14. And the oldest son, I've sent him to Landmark. So he is a graduate of the Landmark form. Uh, this summer we had goals. And with the youngest one, I was feeling really bad, right? He did not know how to ride a bike. I didn't take the time. Look, I didn't take the time to teach him yes. how to ride a bike. And I don't think that I was necessarily the best uh, equipped to teach him how to ride a bike when I haven't rode a bike in 30 years. And so I went and as I tell people, when you don't have the skill set, acknowledge it and then go find your kids the necessary help. Yeah, go find resources. C CDOT has a free bike riding program. So last weekend we rode a bike for five miles, both of us, all up through Lincoln Park. The program gave us helmets and I had to find him a bike to use because he's under the age of 18. You can't ride divvy bikes, but they gave me a divvy bike. Um, and so setting those goals and, and adhering to him, this was the summer he wanted to learn how to ride a bike. This was the summer that he wanted to learn to ride a scooter. But I had to take full responsibility for that. I was too busy yeah. on whatever it was that I was doing to teach the boy. But here's yeah. what I learned when we get to the class. He was the youngest person in the class. The average age of a student was 50 and the oldest student was 70. So I'm yeah. not the only person. Right. But let me say that's not the excuse. I'm not. But I'm not the only person. So I felt a little bit better as he was learning. Right. And then those daily affirmations. I'm using the uh, the prompter app to do my daily affirmations because they change and you will start to see things manifest in your life. One of the things is I've been very diligent. I told you I had lipedema. The only way in order to get rid of it, there's only, there's only one way, and that is through large body mass liposuction. Well, oftentimes insurance companies view that as being cosmetic. Last week, because I've been diligent mm -hmm. on, look, setting the goals, the doing goal. the affirmation, out of the blue, the insurance specialist at my doctor's office calls me and tells me, Marky, 
your insurance, your Blue Cross Blue Shield, you don't need a pre-authorization. They pay 75%. And I'm just sitting there and tears are rolling down my face because she was on my to-do list to call, even though my surgery is not until November. Let me just say that. I've been working diligent every single day on implementing some strategies because what I do want is for them to pay. So when we're talking to people in real estate, right? Mm -hmm. Write down what it is that you want. Say that mantra. Right. Say that mantra. And and there's no limit to the amount of times you need to say it. You you keep saying it, right? And and get those affirmations. And what I'm noticing in the background, I want y'all to look right here in this picture, right? Am I seeing world's greatest leader? Is is that not a a, a vision board back there? That is is definitely a vision board. And when you look at that vision board, one thing a young lady taught me is that you should set smart goals for your vision board. So it's one thing to have the visualization. But the question now is, is it going to be specific, measurable, obtainable, relevant and time bound for Mm -hmm. everything you see on that board, the car, the trips? How are you going to make those manifest? Yeah. Wow. Okay. What are some other tips that you can give people in real estate this beautiful Monday morning? I think one of the, I, I want to go back to the, the affirmation, the, the one foster parent that taught us. Um, and I think it, it really exudes in my life. Your attitude determines your altitude. And that is something that she used to make us say, and I used to hate it. She used to make us write it. She used to just repeat it over and over. And it didn't dawn on me until later on, obviously, when you're an adult. It's like, ah, that that really matters. When people see me on social media, they, they see the positivity, they see the optimism, they see they feel the energy. All of that is real because my attitude really does determine my altitude. That's the way I see life. That's how I teach it to my children. Uh, my kids really get upset. Sometimes my daughter's like, could you stop being so positive? Absolutely not. You will not, <laughs> you will not, not ever see me be positive because that is the way I choose to live my life. One of the things that I will say that a lot of people with, with that accepting responsibility, is, 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 is acknowledging to yourself that I am responsible for my life, the next phase would be to move into the self-awareness personal development phase. This is very, very key. A lot of people are stuck and can't progress and can't move forward because they aren't as self-aware as they need to be and they refuse to develop themselves. If you do not develop yourself while you are breathing on the earth, you might as well just stop whatever it is that you're doing. This is called continuous improvement. You should not be in the same place that you were last year or five years. If you ever like sit in the, you know, no, no shame to the churches, but you see people who sit in church year after year and they grown, something's wrong. You have to pause and ask, What is the problem? Why are you still stuck? If you were in poverty in year one, you should not be in poverty in year five. Like there should be some progression as you grow older. And here's the thing. It should never stop. It only stops when you take your last breath. So a lot of people don't spend time in that personal development area because the truth is the truth hurts. And when you have to confront the truth, when you have to confront the truth, that's, that, that takes a whole lot of self-discipline and, um, self, and determination to uncover the truth about yourself. And here's the thing. I, I can be as free and as jovial and as happy because I had to, at some point, acknowledge that I did not like myself. I did not like the way things were going in my life. And that was a hard truth to sit in. And so many people are doing so many different things other than confronting the truth. The truth hurts. And the the quicker you acknowledge that, okay, I'm jacked up. That's when the personal development starts. That personal development is every single day. The moment you, if you open up your eyes, God has blessed you to breathe the air and you got the activities of your limbs, even if you don't got the activities of your limbs, but you breathe in God's, the, 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 the air, even though it's polluted, it's an opportunity for you to be be better than what you were the day before. And you need to take that very seriously. And so on my social media, on all platforms, any platform I'm on, I'm talking about self-awareness. That is the key 
to your success in any area of your life. And success, what is success? Success does not is not um, chalked up to monetary gain and material things. Success, uh, by definition of Earl Nightingale, is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. So whatever you put your mind on and, and, and you say, yo, I want to do that, and you actually move in the direction of doing that, and it comes to fruition, that is success. So for me, I take parental leadership very, very important. That is a huge responsibility in my life. As as you guys know, I had an absence of it. That's something that I crave, that leadership, and I love it. And I decided I'm going to be the bomb.com mother. A lot of people don't have parenting goals. I have parenting goals. I want to be the bomb.com mother. Okay. At the end of my days, I want my kids to say, my mom did a, a phenomenal job. And I want to be able to teach them how to be phenomenal parents as well. And so forth from generation to generation. So that's just one of my goals. But it starts with that self-awareness. Personal development is key to your success. First of all, I feel like I just went to church. All right. <laughs> Because everything you just said, right, I don't see people, they are not better year after year sitting in the church, right? So that says something because the church definitely needs to speak to that. This should be a part of every single church because your people are supposed to be getting better, okay? They're supposed to thrive. You cannot be, you cannot say you follow the most high God and still be stuck. That, that's, mm. just, that's contradict. That don't even make sense. But I digress. That don't make sense. Mm. Okay, mm. we our God is a, a like that, ah, though God never changes, like He evolves. We should be evolving wow, as people. Girl, look, let me tell you what I said though this morning to my husband and my son. People in therapy are often in therapy to deal with people in their lives who won't go to therapy. Right? So that that self, right? I go to therapy. Because I understand, just like you, and I think I've heard you mention this, both of my parents were addicts at the same time. It takes a special, and, and, and here's what's funny. My mother didn't start using drugs until I was 18 years old. So she was every mm-hmm. bit of a parental leader until I was grown. She was mm-hmm. at everything, did everything hands on. But when I turned 18, she lost her freaking mind. And I instantly assumed the parental leadership role. And I was laughing at myself the other day. I said, I was the type of daughter, because my mother's passed away, that if I went about me new underwear, I bought my mama new underwear. I said, and I'm overcompensating because my mama's straight up dauphine with matching underwear when, look, Ralph Lauren suits, okay? Because I had to dress her up, (laughs) right? Because I couldn't accept the reality of what it was, right? Yeah, I did learn acceptance uh, eventually, but oh, my God, it is 100 percent and it is a painful place to sit in. Mm -hmm. Last year when the pandemic occurred, I don't know if I told you, but I'm a real estate keynote speaker. I generally spend 100 nights per year on the road working for real estate association, banks and title companies. With that being said, I was forced to come home Friday, March the 13th, 2020. My world as I knew it shut down wow. now for two weeks i laid around i mean when i say laid i laid around i didn't do bupkis and the first thing i did was count my money to see how long i could do this like yeah. and i had come to the conclusion oh i could lay up for two years <laughs> and do absolutely <laughs> nothing and nothing. worry about this later and after i had netflix and binge watched a couple of series i was like oh girl this cannot be your life yeah And the goal was emerge better. And in the Mm -hmm. midst of the past 15 months, published uh, 23 publications, 22 are authored. We did come up with a T-shirt line. It's all about uh, everything is real estate related. Uh, Did a successful membership launch. Um, Did 125 virtual events. Now I'm booked again. I'm going to be back Mm -hmm. on the road 100 nights. And I had said to myself, I would not spend another 100 nights per year on the road. But that's a lie because I'm already booked out. And so (laughs) now I say, I'm going to do one night a week. And so, but that comes from years. That didn't just happen, right? That, That goes back to me seeing my mother. That goes back to the one thing. That goes back to the miracle morning. That goes back to landmark. That goes back to having vision board parties. 
And it's like everybody wants this one hit wonder. Changing mm. your mind takes time. It takes time. It's not it's not an overnight thing. It's a series of nights. <laughs> rough nights. <laughs> Some rough Sleepless nights. Night. <laughs> Sleepless. You're crying. You're wrestling. You're fighting. You're woosahing. It's it's a it's a lot, a lot of nights. Um, and it takes a lot, a lot of work. And a lot of people want to avoid that work. A lot of people, my last post, some people want all the privileges, but none of the responsibility. Like it takes a lot of work to get to a certain place and you got to be willing to do it. You got to be willing to do the hard work. What is one thing that real estate professionals can do today? Well, well, you might've already said it, but how do they do that though? Like, how do we admit to ourselves we aren't perfect and we need work? Here's a, one of the things I am very big on. I'm a DISC certified coach. And one of the things that I'm big on is um, that self-awareness. Assessments are my life, okay? Even before I became a DISC certified coach. If you put in some information, it spits back out data to you where it's something where you can study. It's like books about yourself. That's actually where you start. So you take... Um, like invest in those things where you can start studying yourself. Even the word says study thyself, study to show thyself approved. Like you have to study yourself in order to know, okay, this is not where I want to be, but this is where, okay, this is where I want to be. But it all starts with that aha, that moment of, okay, I'm going to take control of my life and investing in tools and resources to actually help you move in that, in, in that direction. And so I'm a discertified coach and I offer a free assessment for people because I some people don't go looking for personal development. Well, I'm bringing it right to you and I'm giving you a free tool that you could utilize so that you could start that process. And if you if you're following me on social media, if you're not, you should. Um, so you can access that in the link in my bio or you can go directly to my website, JavonStewart.com, and you'll be able to get free access to. Um, a DISC assessment. A lot of people, th that DISC assessment is life changing, life changing. So what's kind of interesting in the world of real estate, at one point, I was a partner in a franchise called Keller Williams. Keller Williams, we do the DISC assessment all the time. And I realized I did not answer your question because you sent me a message about the it's, DISC. It's about the disc. Right. And so, um, and so we, everybody has to go through DISC assessments, right? And then we come back again, right? Just to make sure. And I think people might already know I am a high D, high I on the DISC, very much so. <laughs> um, and so one, when you, when you, I've done personality assessments, uh, it's always about vesting back mm -hmm. into, into wait, know that self understanding. I didn't realize until we went through a leadership training program that if you want to just alienate me, I do not like disrespectful, inconsiderate people. And the more, and I'm okay with be, people telling me no, and I'll give you a prime example. So I told you that Sky, uh, I took Austin to the bike riding class mm -hmm. and there was a facility across the street. A young gentleman walks out of the facility. He's clearly staying here. He drinks his beverage. He balls his cup up and he throws it on the ground. And all I'm thinking to myself is, why would you disrespect where you live in? Why didn't you put that cup in your pocket until you found a garbage can? But then I realized he don't care about himself, which is why he don't care about where it is that he lives. While we're standing there in the park, and this is up on, uh, so some people will know, it was up on division and what division i'm gonna get that or lanes and we're standing talking and there's you could tell that they were high they were they they use dope they cut dead through us and said excuse me and all i'm thinking to myself is it was two additional feet in either direction for you to walk around a person you would never have to say excuse mm -hmm. me so while we're in the bike riding class all I'm noticing is what I consider to be unnecessary disrespect for other people and for where you live because they are hurt and they don't know any better. Mm -hmm. 
And so when I'm seeing people in the store, instead of disrupting them, I'll look to see if I can go down another aisle and come the other way. It's okay to go out of your way. Excuse me doesn't always have to be a word that's used, right? Well, sometimes it's okay to walk your butt around to not be disruptive to others, especially yeah. for me, because I don't like to be disrupted, <laughs> right? So I'm always looking at how do I give the courtesy in which I desire to have? Some people have never been treated well. Therefore, they don't understand um, how it is. They don't know what it feels like to be treated well, so they don't know how to yeah. treat anything else well. And so those were just, you know, like some of the things that uh, know that self. I realized that disrespect, like it's very hard for me to come back and us to yeah. be cool when it did you come on now. I don't even pride myself because it's it distracts, right? So that environment I was in wouldn't be an environment I would consistently put myself in because yes. I would want people who are respecting themselves. One of the things that I, I love that you said was that you like you know your trigger points, right? You know what you don't like, what sets you off. And that's part of being self-aware. And when you are self-aware, if you know these things about yourself, you have the advantage. You won't put yourself in, in, in places like that where you know you can be triggered. And that's one of the things um, that the DISC assessment will actually do for you. It'll, it'll, it'll highlight your what you prefer to do and how you prefer to behave, okay? And so like I'm a high D as well and I'm a high C. Um, things that trigger me are people who are incompetent, right? So I have this this uh, this patience. My patience is a little a little thin, but now that I know this about myself, I need to one when I'm aware, like okay, if I identify somebody as being incompetent, not to go off on the deep end on them because you know I can control that. And so being self-aware literally puts you in control of opportunities that come your way or a lack thereof. Um, being becoming a better communicator. You see what I'm saying? So self-awareness is extremely important. One of the things that you talked about, I want to say this, when people don't have values, when there's an absence of values, um, you can, it shows up in their behavior. So your values actually determine your behavior. So the, the, the way you behave, you can look over your life and look, okay, do I have certain values in my life? And this can actually help you to determine, um, how you want to behave and move forward. But when somebody don't have values, you can clearly see it. Okay. You can clearly see it. So that's why it's important for us to even develop values. Like, are you able to identify the top five values in your life? And if you're not, those are some things that you might want to sit down and pin out so that you could um, start moving consistently with the values that you actually cherish and hold. So that's what I wanted to say about that. Wow, I've gotten so much more out of this conversation than no <laughs> excuses, right? Uh, one, I feel like I've been to church. So I want to thank you for, for coming this morning, for sharing. Uh, hopefully, our my fellow realtors, we will gain something out of this. There's, you know, I'm thinking, oh, I need to probably do the disc assessment again. I, it's been some years. What has shifted and changed? Because you do see shifts and changes in yourself over time when you're yeah. working on yourself. How yes. does one connect with you? Okay, so if you guys want to connect with me, right on Instagram, you could spell out my name, J-A-V-O-N-N-E dot steward, S-T-E-W-A-R-D. Uh, you could connect with me there. On Facebook is Javon Stewart. Um, you will see me in the same merch over and over again uh, because it, it literally does something for you, you know, we, we may have made excuses yesterday. You may make some in the future, but today, no excuse today. We are in the present as it's all about busting moves, uh, eliminating excuses. And, um, and, and you can't be around me and not not want to bust the move. And so I encourage you to follow me so we can uh, we can stay connected. And if you need a little inspiration, you need that boost, you need that push, that's what I am here for. And if you want to um, take that assessment, it's free. I offer it for free. But if you want that consult, uh, that consultation, then that's when you will book me. And then we can go over that assessment and come up with a personal development plan on how you can actually um, utilize that assessment. I use it. I read it 
every single day, at, at least something from it so that I can work on myself daily. And that's that's the hard work. So don't come to me if you're not ready to bust a move. That's pretty much what I'm saying, okay? I'm about that action. Bust a move, boo. Bust a move. I'm, I'm a high D, and I like to get results. So if you come to me and you're like, I want to, you know, be phenomenal in this area, well, you got to be ready to do the work, okay? If you ain't, then stay where you at. <laughs> amen. Amen. So the church said amen. I want to see if we have any questions for you. Uh, a lot of great comments. Other people said they want to be the bomb.com mom. Um, <laughs> somebody said, yes, pla pass that offering plate right on over. Your attitude determines your altitude. Yes, it does. And my girl, Sherry Jordan, she was like, preach, 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 preach. Somebody said, girl, was your auntie my granny. So, yeah, look, because some of us, we had to go out there and put <laughs> put them dukes up, right? <laughs> I assume my auntie was probably a high uh, D. A high she D. probably was. I know she was. Yes. Yeah. So and so everybody, thank you uh, for being here with us today. Please go and connect with Javon Stewart. Also, check out no excuse today.com. Yep, I got that right. No excuse today.com. Just add that dot com. Pick up your merch because what you will merch. know. What you will know is you can't you can't have no excuses and have this on. <laughs> not, not that day. So so that day you need you need to perform. This is what you need to be wearing. Because yes. when you said it, I said to myself, oh, girl, you better go on and do some more things today because you can't have no excuses. Thank yes. you, Javon. Thank you so much, Marky, for having me. I really appreciate you. And to all y'all I can't see. Um, go make no excuses. Put the X's up. I, I, I tell my audience. Put them X's up. No excuse today, okay? Whatever it is that you want to do, whatever you said, the thoughts in your head, the ideas, let's get it done. Make it happen. No excuse today. Get it done, guys. <laughs>